I started using Camtasia back way back in 2009, and I really loved it back then, but then they didn't have support for Mac. So when I started using a MacBook, I stopped using it. But fast forward to 2022, and Camtasia supports both Mac and Windows softwares. So I wanted to give it a second chance and try it again. And previously, I had done video recordings and recording my screen using Camtasia. In fact, I even made a video on that, which you can check out in the description below at the end of this video. But I wanted to run an experiment to see if I could edit an entire YouTube video using Camtasia. So are you ready to see the results of my experiment? Hey Go Getter, it's Salma Jafri, and on this YouTube channel, I'm gonna show you how to grow your visibility, credibility, and profitability with YouTube. So if that's what you wanna do, hit that red subscribe button and the bell icon, and let's begin. Okay, so I'm gonna to go to Camtasia file and open a new project. Okay, so here's the footage I want to import, but before I go ahead and drag this into the timeline, I want to make sure that the dimensions of this footage are going to be the same as the dimension of my Camtasia screen. So I want to open up the info for this footage and check the dimension. It says 1920 by 1080. And those are the dimensions that I want to also use. So I want to make sure I go to edit, go to project settings, and have the same dimension. So it's 920 by 1080, which is perfect. I click apply, and now I can go ahead and import that media. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on import, and then drag it to the timeline. So the next thing I wanna do is color correct this footage, and I wanna do this step now before I split it and cut it into sections, because then I'll have to do each section separately. So I wanna um, color correct the entire footage first. Okay, so what we wanna do is add visual effects. And if you don't see that on the left sidebar here, you wanna click on more, and then you wanna click on visual effects. And from here, I wanna click on color adjustment, which is going to make it look black and white. Um, but now I wanna make incremental changes. First, I wanna make all these values zero. So I have a clear starting board, okay? Now I can incrementally adjust the brightness and let's adjust the contrast. So you wanna make these small adjustments to when you can get your footage looking exactly the way that you want it to. So it's looking nice and sharp and I'm happy with this. Now, if I turn off color adjustment, this is what it looked like. And if I turn it on, you can just see that it adds a little bit of brightness to my footage. Okay, the next thing I wanna do is make sure the audio is optimal. So I'm gonna click over here, go to audio, make sure that auto normalize loudness is checked. And I'm also going to check mix to mono in case somebody's listening with headphones on. I want them to be able to hear my video on both sides of the headphone, left and right speakers, and checking this box is going to do it. Okay, so the next thing I wanna do is actually cut my clip. And so the way to do that, I wanna increase the size of this. So I want this to be a bit larger so I can see the audio waveforms, which is gonna make it way easier to cut. Okay, now I wanna see where I actually start speaking from. So this is all um, the point where the audio just starts from, right? And you can make maximize this a little bit more, zoom in. And I don't wanna cut here. I don't wanna cut here, okay? I wanna cut just right before I actually start to speak. So right around this point, okay? And to make the cut, you can either click on this split icon here, or you can do right click, split selected. And if you are a pro, you can use some keyboard shortcuts as well. So I'm not gonna do that right now. I'm gonna actually use this icon here and click split. So this is going to split the clip into two. I'm gonna delete the part I don't want and this is how it's gonna play. Okay, so you might be thinking- I And it plays right from the start where I'm actually starting to talk, and that is how you wanna cut your clips. Make sure that you use the audio waveform to see exactly where you're about to speak, cut right before that moment, and that is how you make invisible cuts. Okay, the next thing I wanna do is make another cut and add a transition between two clips. So let's say that this is the point where I want to add this transition, so again, I make the other cut right here. And now what I wanna do is add a transition. So you wanna go into transitions, and let's say I'm going to choose a simple circle crop, and I wanna drop this between the two clips, like so. And we can adjust the length of this, but let's play it out. Quit to brand deals. Brand okay, so that's how it appears. And if you want to make it go faster or slower, you can adjust these playhead markers like so. This will make it go faster. This will make it go slower. 
Okay, so the next thing, once you have all your clips cut and ready to go, is to add in a few things that will help with retention. So a couple of things that we wanna add in are text. We wanna add in a zoom and pan effect to have a little bit of movement in your frame and just a couple of things that will add some animation. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna add is text. So I'm gonna go to annotations and choose a text call out here. You'll see all of these different styles. And so I'm gonna click one and drag it to my timeline. And then I can adjust pretty much everything in here, the fonts, the colors, the positioning of that. So let's put it here and adjust the text. Okay, so once you've added the text in, you wanna add a little bit of movement to how this text comes in. So you wanna go into behavior and you wanna click on one of these. Let's click reveal. So you wanna click this and drag it right up to the text box. And let's play this. Number one, can you create authority content in your niche for your specific? Okay, and you can also adjust how this um, reveal behavior actually plays in, during, and out. So I actually don't want it to pulsate during, so I'm going to go here and click none, and I want to keep it when coming in and also while going out. Perfect. Okay, next thing I wanna do is add some zooms. So what I wanna do is make sure that I zoom into my face when I'm making a point of emphasis and also it's gonna add a little bit of movement to my camera frame. So the camera is stationary, but I will add in movement using the zoom effect. So I wanna go into animations here and I wanna click on scale up. So scale up will make it zoom in. I wanna click this, drag it to the timeline at the point where I want the zoom to start. Now this arrow represents the start time and the end time of the zoom. And I can adjust how long it's gonna to take to happen or how short it's gonna be. So let me play this for you. People like to see products out being Okay, and when you want to return back to the original frame, what you want to do is click on scale to fit and drag that to wherever you want to return it back. And that is going to return your frame back to 100%. Products out being used in the real world by real people. That was pretty easy, right? Okay, so now another thing you can do is drop in existing media, images, movies, and stuff on your timeline that you wanna add as B-roll or as inserts. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to media. Then I'm gonna go on file and click on import media. And then let me just go ahead and add this PDF for my video content planner, which is my template for writing scripts. So now it's added over here and I'm just going to drag this to the timeline like so, and let's maximize this all the way. And I want it to scroll down, so I'm gonna add a custom animation here. So I'm gonna go into animation, go custom, put this right here where I want it to start the scroll. And then I just simply wanna move the screen down like so. So this is how it's going to run, right? So that's how I can put an image and make some movement happen in that image. All right, the next thing I wanna do is add an intro to my YouTube video. So I'm gonna go right to the beginning of this video and I wanna drop in an intro right here. So I'm gonna go into the library. Now Camtasia has some built-in intros and outros. So what we're gonna do is go here where it says intros click on this arrow and all the intros open up. So I'm gonna choose one from here, let's say minimal elegance, and drop it into the timeline right before my video starts. Okay, now I'm going to adjust the title here. And I'm also going to adjust the color. And then maybe let's add some music to this intro title. So I'm gonna click on music tracks. And let's drop this in as well. Okay, I wanna cut the music off right at this point. All right, now we've done our intro, let's do our outro. Okay, so for the outro, I wanna create a YouTube end screen. So I've already created one in Canva earlier, which I'm just going to import now. I'm gonna click on this plus button, import media, and let's search for end screen. Here we go, I have my end screen template in PNG format here. I'm going to import this in, 
and I'm going to drag this onto the timeline and I'm going to position it below uh, my footage because what I want to do is split my footage right at the end and then I want it to play while the end screen is also showing. So I'm going to take this file and trim it down. Actually, let's just trim it halfway. So to trim this, I want to click on crop and I want it to just be positioned to the left like so, so that my end screen can show in the background. So about halfway in, perfect. And let's play this and see how it works out. With you and meet all of these four criteria. So are you ready? <laughs> all right, that is looking good. And you just wanna make sure that you can minimize it so that you keep retention going while you're still talking and the end screen for the YouTube video shows up. Okie dokie, let's export this file. So if you wanna export the entire file, you can just simply go to file and export, but I just wanna export a specific portion of this file as a test here. So what I can do is drag this playhead, this right part of playhead, choose the section that I want to export. So for example, this now is the section that's going to be exported. I wanna click on file, export to local file. So I actually wanna download it to my computer before I upload it to YouTube. So I'm gonna click on local file and it says current selection, yes, continue. And in the settings, I'll give this a name. And then I wanna make sure that it's exporting an MP4 cause that is going to work on different operating systems. And I also wanna make sure that I go into the options and from here I choose streaming. So if download is selected by default, you wanna go and click on streaming. That's gonna help it to stream on YouTube a little bit smoother. And then I'm gonna leave the rest of it all in default mode. Make sure the dimensions are current because I set them as the same as the actual footage earlier on. And then I click on okay and export. And from here, I'm going to simply go ahead and upload the exported MP4 file to YouTube. Okay, so after going through this experiment and actually editing an entire YouTube video uh, in Camtasia, I have a couple of things to take away from this. First of all, it's really easy to start with. It is very beginner friendly. Camtasia is extremely, extremely uh, uh, easy for a beginner. So I highly recommend, in fact, I tell all my clients now that if you are just starting out with video editing, start off with Camtasia. Now I do have a discount code for you in the description below, but you can start with a free trial, implement all the steps that you learned today, and then go ahead and upgrade it's a one-time cost and once you purchase that one license you can typically use it on two different devices the other thing is that i really like the built-in functionality with all the youtube specific things like intros and outros music and transitions because they all make it really really easy to have like a final complete youtube video without relying on 10 different types of you know softwares or websites to have to work with and the last thing that i really like is the knowledge base so camtasia has a really really good knowledge base of tutorials and they're very helpful with their community and their help. So there is a big, big community using Camtasia. So you will find lots of help. All in all, I think Camtasia is a great video editing software to use for beginners that is price friendly, not very heavy on your pocket, and it will make editing a joy. So go ahead and click on the link in my description and start your free trial today. And I will see you in the next one.